Hi, folks. This is Mark by Mark A. Foster, Ph.D. for the Institute for Dialectical Metarealism. I will read you a very short article from National Public Radio in the United States, NPR, on a recent development um, regarding Colombia and diplomatic relations with uh, Israel. So let me go ahead and uh, put on my eyeglasses so I can see, and then I will uh, I will attempt to read for you the article, and then we will discuss it. The uh, headline is, Colombia will break relations with Israel over its actions in Gaza, Petro says. And here is the article. Colombia is set to break diplomatic relations with Israel over its actions in Gaza. Speaking to a crowd in the capital of Bogota on Wednesday, Colombian President Gustavo Petro said that the country will break diplomatic relations with the state of Israel on Thursday, calling the government genocidal. If Palestine dies, humanity dies, and we are not going to let it die, he said. I'm reading the next paragraph in advance and kind of shaking my head at it. Israel has strongly denied committing genocide in the war against Hamas in Gaza. Yeah, right. As if you have any credibility, Zionist entity. Strongly denied? How do you deny evidence? How do you deny evidence? It's like denying gravity. How do you deny gravity? I mean, if you, if, if, if you, uh, if there was no gravity, we would all simply be floating around, I guess. Everything would be floating around that wasn't nailed to the ground. How in the world can Israel deny genocide? Well, I know it has. Obviously, it has to deny it. It can't acknowledge it. That would be too nice. And Israel is not a nice place. What a what a horrible response. It it just it just seeing something like that just kind of unnerves me. <sighs> History will remember. That Gustavo Petro decided to side with the most despicable monsters known to mankind. I bet you can't guess where that came from. Time up. Israel. Yeah, Israel. That's according to Israeli Foreign Minister Israel Katz. It was in a post on X, formerly known as Twitter. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess it could have come from Netanyahu or anybody on the team, so to speak, could have said that, but it doesn't really matter. It's all just one team of genocidal monsters that are all doing this. I don't care who said it. If I know it was somebody in the Israeli government, I know not to trust it. And in my view, nobody else should trust it either. Sadly, sadly, a lot of people in the world are siding with Israel. Fortunately, there are some brave leaders, some brave countries who are willing to step out of the line and denounce Israel. As we all should, as the students are, around the world, in their protests, we all should denounce the actions of Israel. Speaking as a retired college professor, if the student protests disrupt classes, so what? So what? What's the point of having a university, a place of learning, 
if you can't engage in praxis, if you can't engage in protest, why have a university? Universities are about learning and protests promote learning. They really do. Anyway, I let me go back to the article because otherwise I'll just rant and rave and rant and rave. Um, Colombia is one of the U.S.'s closest partners in Latin America, and it has previously been a close partner of Israel. Pause. That is significant. Why? Because we are not talking about a historical enemy of Israel. We're not talking about a country that has always or almost always been against Israel. No, that's not Colombia. That's not Colombia. Colombia is not in that camp. The fact that Colombia is willing to uh, break off diplomatic relations with Israel is a really serious statement, a really significant event. Uh, and I think it should be regarded as such. And I hope, I hope that other countries, including my own, I say with a laugh under my breath, does the same thing. I mean, obviously, the U.S. is not going to break off relations with Israel. The U.S. is its primary financier in this war, in this terrorist campaign. So breaking off relations would literally be an unresolvable contradiction. The U.S. won't break off relations with Israel, at least not as far as I can see. I can't imagine anything that Bibi Netanyahu would do that would result in the U.S. breaking off relations with Israel. Nothing. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong but I just can't imagine it. The U.S. has been, I don't know, like Siamese twins to Israel for the entire history of Israel. I mean, there wouldn't be an Israel, as far as I know, if it were not for the U.S. Maybe another country would have put Israel over the line in the U.N. General Assembly, maybe. So it's possible, I guess. But would Israel have lasted this long? I don't know. But I doubt it. Maybe Britain would have filled that place. Maybe Germany would have filled that place. So I suppose some other country might have stepped in if the U.S. were not around. But it's hard to conceive of Israel existing in its present form as a country which has committed historically numerous war crimes and almost every single time the u.s has used its veto power in the general assembly to block it what a tragedy it's sinful purely sinful i don't know another word for it sinful back to the article but colombia's leftist president is one of several Latin American leaders to take a strong vocal stand against Israel since its military campaign in Gaza. In response to the October 7th Hamas-led attack in Israel. All I can say is good for them. Good for them. And may more countries come on board. May more countries follow Colombia and Bolivia, and do the same, and support an indigenous country, support a country that was robbed of its legitimacy by the United Nations and by Israel in 1948, when land was stolen from the Palestinians and used to create a homeland, a promised land for the Jews. Um, I am not saying, as I've mentioned before, that there should have been no 
homeland or whatever you want to call it, created for the Jews. As long as it would be disconnected from Zionism, from Herzl's philosophy of Zionism, I would have no objection to doing it, but I think it should be clearly stated that this has nothing to do with Theodore Herzl's Zionism. Um, but that land should not have been in Palestine. Palestine is an indigenous area. There was no right. There was no right for Israel to be placed in Palestine. Palestine was not complicit. Despite actually claims by some Israeli officials that Palestinian leaders were complicit, total and bogus lies, all designed to justify its own existence. But whatever, I mean, time will pass. I think in retrospect, and I don't know how long it will take, that people will look back at this time and will see the legitimacy of Gaza and the illegitimacy of the Zionist entity. Sometime. It may be a long time, but sometime. Most people in the world, most leaders in the world, will recognize that Israel is an illegitimate country, having been founded on indigenous land, stealing the indigeneity of Palestinians, stealing the indigeneity of Palestinians, much as Americans stole the indigeneity of Native Americans, of the Inuit people, and of Native Hawaiians, much as Canada stole the indigeneity of First Nations peoples and others. So um, you can't commit an act of genocide and then say, well, what we did is not genocide. Not really, not really, when all the evidence points to the contrary. And yet that is precisely what the Zionist entity has been doing. Denying its genocidal activity, even as it commits them, even as it kills children, babies in incubators. Hmm. Some people in Israel have even said, well, they, are, they may grow up to be Hamas. That's enough of a, re of a reason. They may grow up to be Hamas. What trash. What absolute trash. And yet it appears that by and large, most of the Jewish Israeli public believes it. Not only believes it, but accepts it enthusiastically. It should be a crime. But sadly, it is not. Sadly, it is not. In our present day world, it is not a crime. Who are the criminals? Well, the student protesters on university and college campuses. They are the ones getting arrested. Not Netanyahu, not members of his government, not Joe Biden, who supports Netanyahu and his government. The student protesters are being arrested for protesting acts that are taking place in another country. Israel is not in the United States, as far as I know. As far as I know. Although functionally, it has been treated as such. It is still not legally in the United States. And even if it were, even if it were, that should not stop students and professors from protesting against a genocide. 
even if Israel refuses to call it that. Okay, fine. Fine. Don't call it a genocide. Call it the Holocaust of the 21st century. That's okay. Call it that. Of course, they won't call it that either. But it's just a pure tragedy that Israel is being permitted to get away with this stuff with literally no consequences, at least not now, maybe in the future. I don't know. But as long as the U.S. runs the world, as long as the U.S. is the world's sole superpower, I suspect that Israel will continue to get, get away with it. <sighs> Donald Trump, if he's elected, apparently doesn't like Netanyahu that much, but I think he will do the same thing. If he's elected, he will let Israel get away with it. If Biden is reelected, he will continue to let Israel get away with it. There is no prospect of change. There is no hope, at least no, no immediate hope for the Palestinians, for the Gazans. They are condemned to live a life of enslavement to the Israelis with no hope at all, at least not under present circumstances. Let me read for you the uh, final paragraph. This week, the United Nations Court at The Hague, the World Court, rejected Nicaragua's request to order a halt to Germany's arms exports to Israel. Okay, so... Um, Again, we have two things happening, two big things happening that are mentioned in this article. The student protests are not focused on here, but Colombia breaking off relations with Israel tomorrow, Thursday, and the World Court at The Hague rejected Nicaragua's request to order a halt to Germany's arms exports to Israel. Um, so what does that make the world court? An international terrorist movement or organization? The world court, at least in this instance, is siding with Israel. Is saying, Shh, you can't do that. You can't stop Germany from giving weapons to the Zionist entity. You can't do that. That's not fair. Fair my ass. It's the only fair thing that could be done. And yet it won't happen. Because the world court has stopped it. So we are living in very troublesome times. I mean, that's an understatement. When I see people that I've known forever, which is not that often because I don't live anywhere near the people I grew up with, but when I see them like on Zoom primarily, most of them look extraordinarily downcast. Now, I can't prove that they are downcast because of this terrorist campaign on Gaza. But I think that that's the reason, or at least a reason. There is anger. There is anger among many average Americans at what Joe Biden has been doing. The fact that Joe Biden is now rescheduling weed Will that help Biden? Maybe. It shouldn't, because rescheduling weed and slaughtering Palestinians, those two things don't even belong in the same sentence. 
There is no comparison. But it might help him in the kind of topsy-turvy world that we live in. It might very well help him. But if it does, if it does, which I am not discounting that, I will admit the possibility that it might help him. I I don't want it to. I hope it doesn't. But um, could it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It could. Um, that will further, in my opinion, lower the credibility of the United States to where it is now. And the credibility of the United States now is not very high, especially in third world countries. Third world countries, which generally empathize with Gaza and not with Israel. The U.S. used to have some credibility with those third world countries, some because of its financial aid to them on and off when it suited the United States. But now that credibility seems like it's fallen to the ground and good for that. I hope it falls down even more. But regardless, I am just discouraged by what the world court has done and encouraged by what Colombia has done or will do tomorrow. So I guess it's a mixed thing, a mixed bag, a mixed bag. But still, the fact that Colombia will end its diplomatic relations with Israel, so what? So what? It's not like Colombia is a major global power. It's not. It's not. How will that affect Israel? It won't. I mean, it's a nice gesture, symbolically, but I am tired of symbolic gestures. I'm tired of them. Who cares about symbolic gestures? I want the Israeli terrorist campaign against Gaza to end. I want the Israelis to leave Israel and go someplace else. I don't care where. As long as it is not into another indigenous area. An area populated with people who are now living as indigenous people. And there are such places like that around the world. Their number is dwindling, but there are some. I would like to see Israelis leave and go someplace which, which is not based on indigeneity. That's what I want. Let them all leave. Abandon your homes. Take your stuff, your clothing, your computers, your television sets, your radios, whatever. As much as you can, take it with you or have it shipped someplace else. But leave, leave Palestine to the Palestinians, the legitimate owners of Palestine. Leave it to them and get the hell out of that place. You don't belong there now. And you didn't belong there in 1948 when you first invaded it. For the time being, this has been Mark by Mark A. Foster, Ph.D. for the Institute for Dialectical Metarealism. Have a pleasant day and an even better day tomorrow.